Hello and welcome to the Elida Fieldhouse for tonight's sectional semifinal game between the LCC Thunderbirds and the Coldwater Cavaliers. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen and tonight's pregame and keys to the game are brought to you by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premium Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over a hundred years, we are proud to call this home. And Dave, we had one heck of a first sectional semifinal game. And if this game is even half of what that one is, it is going to be a great night here at the Fieldhouse. And I do anticipate that. We have two evenly matched teams. Again, Coldwater coming in at 10 and 12. Lima Central, Catholic 10 and 11. Let's take a look at tonight's keys of the game, starting first for the Coldwater Cavaliers. For Coldwater, no free passes. The Cavaliers will need to make every offensive possession for the T-Birds a challenge. Sprinting back on defense to keep LCC from finding easy buckets will be huge for the Cavaliers. Run Coach Norman Dale's offense. Hey, to make the allusion to the coach from the movie Hoosiers and the main character, Coach Norman Dale, Coldwater will want to be solid with the basketball, and while maybe not being required to make five passes per possession, they're going to want to handle the basketball and handle that LCC pressure and make the T-Birds really work hard and play defense longer than they are accustomed. Do that and finish possessions with scores, and the Cavaliers will put themselves in position to win. Now, LCC has had a bit of an up and down season, but some huge victories to end the year. What do they got to come away do to come away with a victory? You're tonight? right, huge victories in the last regular season game against Defiance, a big win for the T-Birds. They got to check them off the boards. The T-Birds must force Coldwater into tough looks and then own the glass when the shot goes up. Momentum will go their way if they can limit cold water to one shot per possession. And then strive for offensive balance. When LCC can find scoring both inside and out, they are an extremely tough team to beat. They need to look for Billy Burke in the paint early in possessions to put pressure on the Cavalier defense with him either attacking the rim or finding open teammates out around the arc. In the T-Birds' big wins this year, offensive balance has been a key to their success. The road to Dayton starts tonight for both of these teams, and when we return, we'll have tonight's starters and the opening tip. You're watching Boys High School Basketball on WOSN. Hello and welcome back to the Elida Fieldhouse for tonight's sectional semifinal matchup between the Coldwater Cavaliers and the LCC Thunderbirds. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. As tonight's starters are being announced for both teams, we will take a look at them as well, starting first for the Coldwater Cavaliers. They are going to start number 24, Brady Leifeld. Number 22, Evan Harlemert. Number 42, Luke Sweeterman. Number 11, Marcel Blassengame. And number 23, Justin Kalp. For the Thunderbirds, and they will start number 30, Payne Cutlip. Number 12, Matthew Quatman. Number 34, Billy Burke. Number 10, Carson Parker. And number 20, Parker Judy. Taking a look at tonight's officials, they will be Clay Ehrman, B.J. McFerrin, and James Stoll. Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen. And Dave, you know, we talked about a little bit in the pregame, you know, LCC kind of an up and down season, had some big victories towards the end of the year that kind of got their momentum going the right way. Coldwater, on the other hand, started off really hot, a lot of wins early in the season, and then hit a rough patch, lost seven straight before they finished out the season with a big win over Minster. You're right. LCC has won five of their last six. Coldwater and a little, of a, down, little bit of a downspin and then recovers against Minster. Again, a great opportunity for both of these teams to survive in advance. We'll see what happens. Coldwater, I'm really excited to see number 42, Luke Schwederman, play against number 34 for LCC, Billy Burke. We said the ball needs to go inside for that balance for LCC. Schwederman's going to have a lot to say about that defensively against Burke. So we are just about underway here in game two from the Elida Fieldhouse. Game one went into double overtime, a victory for the Bluffton Pirates. They await the winner of tonight's matchup. The opening tip is up, and it will be controlled by the Thunderbirds. Carson Parker 
Feeds down low. This one gets rejected. And a turnover for Coldwater as the Thunderbirds come up empty on their first offensive possession. Able to hustle back and establish a defensive position. Ball goes right inside right away to Schwederman. Schwederman guarded tightly by Burke. Has to get rid of it. Nice find as the blasting game got through on the cut but couldn't get it to go down. LCC swings the ball around the perimeter. We talked about that balance again. Uh, we saw it late in the season for LCC as they had that run. Early on in the year, uh, we had the game with LCC and St. John's. They did a great job of getting the ball inside in that game as well and hitting the outside shot when it presented itself. We see penetration right there. Parker Judy tried to get inside, had it rejected. Coldwater on the run out. They can't finish. Second chance falls. Give the two-point field goal to Justin Kaup. Coldwater gets the first bucket of the game. This one goes out of bounds. It'll stay with LCC. As you see, Carson Parker, one of the leaders of this team. He's been playing great basketball here towards the end of the season. Yeah, the leading score for LCC at 15 points per game. Parker Judy working through the screen. He's going to pull up for two. This one's going to be a little bit long. A rebound comes down to Sweeterman. Coldwater now going to slow things down as blasting game. Going to let the offense get set. Sweeterman immediately goes down low, trying to post up on Burke. So you see that Coldwater would love to run the offense through him each and every time. They're going to let him be physical down there, but Billy Burke, again, reaches across the body and picks up the personal. Billy needs to stay on the floor. He's got to be smart defensively, either get all the way around in front so the ball can't be entered to Sweeterman, or be strong and wall up when he gets it on the block. Sweeterman has this one, goes off his hands. Parker Judy picks it up, gets it ahead to Carson Parker. Carson gets it down into the corner, gets it, and it ends up back in his hands as LCC moves it around the perimeter. They were looking for Burke down low. That one gets tipped. Burke gets it. He's going to back down Sweeterman, trying to go with the footwork. Gets up high, but Sweeterman with the rejection, going to go out of bounds and will stay with LCC. Yeah, Billy Burke got a little out of uh, shape right there, but recovers nicely on the up and under move, but gives Sweeterman kudos. Great block. Ball stays with the T-Birds. Inbounds comes to Burke. He goes immediately down low to Parker. Carson gets it up through contact. Can't get it to go down, but he's going to go to the free throw line. And that's going to be a foul on Marcel Blazing game. One of the best defenders for the Cavaliers on Carson Parker. We see it on the replay. Outside in action. Burke to Parker. And I think that's what LCC is going to have to try to do. They're going to try to take advantage of the opportunities when they finally do pull Sweeterman away from the basket like they had right there. But Carson Parker not able to uh, connect on his first free throw. Second one goes down as Coldwater has the early 2-1 lead. Yeah, and Parker will have an advantage down there when that occurs. He's 6-4. Great hands by Parker. Takes this one away. Going to look to go all the way in with the left hand. Gets it to go. He does such a great job of keeping his body between the defender and the basketball, does uh, Carson Parker. We see it on display right there. Three-pointer on its way and good. Evan Harlemer with a three-pointer. He shoots 35% behind the arc, tickles the twine on that one. Cutlip hands it off to Burke. Almost has that pass jump, but a great job by Matthew Quatman. Gathered that one in, attacked the basket. It's going to go out of bounds. Coach Kill calling the under out of bounds set. Going to be four across the baseline. Quatman gets it in. Shots on its way, no good. Parker Judy comes up short. Here come the Cavaliers, see if they can get something early. They do. And a great job that time as Harlemer with the fake pass made Judy go out to the wing, left that lane wide open. Ended up with the easy two. You can't allow that to happen in any game, but in tournament, it's just so much more personified. An easy bucket in transition. Carson Parker spins in the paint and gets a two-point field goal. Great touch by Parker to get that one off the back of the iron to go down. 
Coldwater passes out of the trap, gets Sweeterman down low, and it looks like Burke is going to pick up his second foul here in the early going. Yeah, throughout that possession, Billy Burke was very aggressive defensively, too aggressive with one foul only halfway through the first quarter, and he's going to come out of the game at this point in time, and Jacob Locke's going to come in replacing Burke, who now has two fouls. So Coldwater will inbound from underneath their own basket. Quickly gets it in as this one ends up in the hands of Busher, who had just checked in for the Cavaliers. Cole Warner has it around the perimeter. Busher gets it back up top. Quick head fake. Great poke away by Quatman. Long pass. Quatman on the run out. Left hand, no good. LCC tries to return the favor on a run out. A live ball turnover, unable to connect. Busher for three. That one's off the front of the rim. Rebound comes down to Coldwater. That one's going to roll around. No good. Carson Parker comes up with the board. Parker in a tie with the lead at seven rebounds a game. He's going to have to do yeoman's work here with Burke on the bench. Gets Michael, another rebound right there. Michael Tafflinger loses the handles on that one. An easy turnover for the Cavaliers. As they hand it off to Blockberger, who's checked back in. Lazen game to the inside. Too easy, but LCC fortunate that one didn't go in. Fight for the loose ball, and it ends up back in the hands of the Cavaliers. Blazing game, three-pointer, no good. And we're going to have a loose ball foul. Nice this. check out by Tafflinger on the back side. Blade Busher gets called for that foul. It's his first team second. 7-5, Coldwater on top. 3.32 left to go here in the first quarter. Cutlip going to bring it up for the Thunderbirds. Cutlip, one of the most improved players on this T-Bird squad. Floor general right now setting the offense. T-Birds rotate it and reverse it from side to side. Tafflinger for three. That one's good. Michael Tafflinger, he has the Thunderbirds' first three-pointer of the game. Yeah, and he is the leading three-point shooter for LCC at a clip of 48%. Shoots it very well from behind the arc. LCC trying to turn up the defensive pressure. Locke down in the corner. Coldwater has to get rid of it. Running baseline. Kalp kicks it back out. And we're going to have an offensive foul. This one is going to go on Harlemert. It'll be his first team's third. Jacob Locke with the charge. Does a nice job of setting himself up defensively, rotating over. We're going to see it on the Road State College replay. Jacob Locke with the charge, turnover against Coldwater. Going to have another substitution, number 41, Miles Potcotter coming in for Coldwater as Harlemert will take a seat. Coldwater coming out in a full court press. Cutlip gets the basketball as Coldwater retreats. Cutlip's going to try to drive, has this one taken away, gets the basketball back. Nice slip past the lock, able to connect. Quatman extra pass to Parker. Parker moves it over. Tafflinger, three-point try, one more. This one's short. Jacob Locke with the rebound, lets the defense fly by, up and in. Jacob Locke giving quality minutes to the T-Birds here in the early going. Has taken a charge and gets the field goal right there, Nate. LCC extends their lead to three on top, 10-7. And this shot is up and in. Mason Welsh comes up with his first two. Averages six points a game off the bench for Coldwater. The kiss off the window right there. LCC comes down quickly as Carson cannot connect. Three-pointer on its way. This one rattles off. No good. Quatman taps it back. Ends up in the hands of Welsh. This time, Quatman reached up, got the rebound, but we're going to have a whistle first as this foul is going to go on. Let's see who they put it up on. Number 12. As it does go on, Quatman, as it looked like Quatman was... Pretty alone when he went for that rebound, but the official underneath said he got a push off. Yeah, I think there was a reason he was lonely. <laughs> the Coldwater player had been vacated from the area. You know, Coldwater, Coach Fisher said we need to be patient on offense. They have been anything but. They've gotten a lot of shots off here in the first quarter. And nothing wrong with that. It hasn't hurt them. They're right there at 10 to 9, but he stressed that patience on offense would be a key. We'll see how that evolves as the game continues. Willie Foster Jr. coming in for LCC as they force the backcourt violation. Jacob Locke with the inbounds. Here's Foster. 
Works up top, Tafflinger moves around, Foster keeps it himself, spins into the lane. And I think he might have gotten bailed out by that contact as it looked like the ball had kind of gotten stuck as he went for the finger roll, but it was probably mostly because of that contact. So Foster going to go to the free throw line to shoot two with LCC up one. Yeah, Foster aggressive to the basket. Things work his way with the foul being called. The 62% free throw shooter nails the first one. Couple more substitutions coming into the game as both of these teams have gone to their bench a lot here in the early going. A lot and deep. See number 40, Sal Gajeni coming in for LCC as Foster connects on both free throws. Minute 37 left to go here in the opening quarter. Coldwater with the basketball. Foster with the quick hands, comes around, rips that one away, gonna be out of bounds as they're gonna say Foster carried it out and it'll stay with the Cavaliers. Good hustle by both teams right there. And as you said, the ball goes out of bounds before the held ball could occur. Coldwater maintains possession. Long inbounds of Blockberger. He's gonna bring it up against Tafflinger. Blasingang coming through, down, gets the ball, feeds on the inside. Welsh gets tied up by Locke. Locke takes it away, flips it over to Foster, who's gonna push the tempo. Really good aggressive man-to-man -man defense by the T-Birds. Foster all alone, but cannot connect on that three-pointer as Harlemick comes up with the rebound. Under a minute left to go now. LCC still on top, 12 to nine. Rising game, works against Tafflinger. Kicks it out, here's Sweeterman for three. That one rolls around, no good. Gajeni with the rebound. We'll see what LCC wants to do with 38 seconds left to go. They're trying to go to the inside to lock. This one's gonna get kicked out of bounds as a block burger denied the entry pass. And with the dead ball, Coach Kill going to get Carson Parker back in the game. Again, the leading score for the T-Birds at 15 per game. See Brady Leifeld come back into the game for Coldwater as well. As Parker going to work through the screen, comes free. Takes the inbounds, kicks it back out. And now with 30 seconds left to go, LCC looks like they might be content with taking the last shot of the quarter. Up three points, and get that last shot, put it down. Great momentum builder going into quarter number two. Let's see how it plays out. Foster works through the screen all alone, gets to the basket, no basket. Offensive foul. Great rotation over defensively by Evan Harlemer for Coldwater. Again, charges typically aren't taken by the guy guarding the basketball. It's somebody that rotates over. In this case, it's Harlemer. Foster with the penetration on the replay. Definitely there and set. Nicely done. Good call by James Stahl, Coldwater basketball was 17.9. And the timing by Harlan that was just excellent. Foster really had no choice at that point. There was no chance he was gonna be able to bail out and not have that contact get initiated. Harlan had timed it up perfectly. Five seconds left to go, Coldwater. Harlem at three-point shot. That one's going to be no good. Foster with the rebound. One second left to go. Long shot on its way. It's going to miss the mark, and that's going to bring the first quarter to a close. LCC is on top of Coldwater, 12-9 after one. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Road State College, a two-year state college offering affordable in-person and online associate's degree and certificate programs. LCC on top, 12 to nine, as they have the lead over the Coldwater Cavaliers in this sectional semifinal. And we can look at some stats from the first quarter. LCC was four for 12 from the field, one for five from three. Coldwater, four for 14. 28% overall, one for six from three. The T-Birds shot two free throws, they were two for four. LCC with three turnovers, Coldwater was six, and the rebounds fairly even, LCC was seven, Coldwater with eight. So Coldwater will begin the second quarter with the basketball, as we're gonna have a foul immediately on Foster. This will be his second. 
we talked about uh, the big win at the end of the season uh, for LCC against Defiance, and then they also had another big win, a total team effort against St. John's earlier in the year. Coach Kill talked about any time you can go into Delphus win and win, that's a great one. They Their schedule matches up to anybody's. Coldwater, 10 and 12 on the season, six and three in the MAC. They finished third in the Midwest Athletic Conference, had great wins over New Bremen, St. Henry, and Van Wert. Sweeterman on the inside, able to connect on that one. He talked about that LCC schedule. And, you know, Coach Kill, longtime coach, he's been around. He's coached a lot of teams. He spent a lot of time on the bench. He knows how to build a schedule. They ended up with the third hardest schedule in all of Division Three. So that record, even though it may not look great on paper, they played high-quality competition all year long. And at the end of the day, we, we said it earlier tonight, all that matters is that you're clicking at the right time, which is now. And that seems to be what LCC is doing. Couldn't agree with you more, Nate. Good look there by Parker. Doesn't get it to fall. Nice penetration in number 42. Luke Schwederman does connect for the Cavaliers. Nice job by Luke Schwederman putting that one on the floor to finish as Coldwater finds themselves back on top, 13 to 12. Here's Quatman. Long three-pointer by Quatman. That one's off the side of the rim. Rebound ends up in the hands of Layfeld. Parker got his hands up, knocked that one away. But Coldwater kept it. Sweeterman down low. Willie Foster Jr. with the big rejection. Times it absolutely right on the mark does Willie Foster. And we're going to have a 30-second timeout by Coach Kill. So 30-second timeout by LCC as Coach Kill wants to talk to his team as he's seen Coldwater come out here in this second quarter, make a couple of baskets early and take the lead back. You know, we, we talked a lot about LCC schedule. When you look at Coldwater on the other side, and we mentioned this on the way in, they they had a really bumpy stretch. They lost seven straight games, kind of got things righted there with that win at Minster. But the early part of their season, things were going well. Not really sure what happened in that stretch. They played really good competition. That was part of it. But they just didn't seem like quite like the same team as the beginning of the season. You know, kind of hoping that maybe that Minster – win had kind of gotten them back on track. Yeah, and so far we've got a one-point uh, game here at the early part of the second quarter. Both teams getting after it, playing winning basketball. We'll see how things continue to play out. 6.20 left to go here in the half. LCC finds themselves down one. Burke takes a three-point try, gets it to go down. Billy Burke back in the game after the two fouls there in the first quarter. And he responds with the three-pointer. So he's got to be really smart defensively and not pick up a third. And then that was against a 2-3 zone that Coldwater came out in out of that timeout. Alp can't connect. Burt flies in for the rebound, gets it ahead to Parker. Parker drops it down. Shot made. Parker, Judy, LCC responding great after that timeout. I just love how Carson Parker is aware of everything when he has the basketball. Yeah, he's the leading scorer, but he's always looking for teammates as well. and Does a nice job there. Goldwater leaves that one short. Burke with the rebound. He's going to get fouled. I believe this one will be on Layfeld, but they had three Cavaliers around him. And Brady Layfeld will get called for the foul. So Billy Burke hits a three, coming right back into the game, and a big rebound right there. Aggressive to the glass with the two fouls and draws the personal. Keeps the ball with the T-Birds as a result. And uh, Coldwater again picks up a foul there. They have five teams, team fouls, as does LCC. Well, LCC looking to extend that lead here in the second. Burke down low. Working against Sweeterman, has to get rid of it. He was falling out of bounds, trying to find uh, Parker Judy down in the corner. Ends up with the turnover. Blockberger, he's going to go to the basket. No good. Sweeterman somehow comes up with that rebound. And Carson Parker's going to get whistled for the foul. He was on the ground, and I don't know if it's because he didn't make the attempt to come up as Sweeterman tripped over him. We'll take a look on the replay here. As you can see, Parker's on the ground. And he trips over him, and the official calls the foul on Parker, who was down on the floor. But either way, Sweeterman's going to head to the free throw line. That's a tough one for Carson Parker right there. Obviously, the player's got to have a, an opportunity to come down, but Carson was just in the wrong place at the wrong time to pick up that personal. Sweeterman going to come to the free throw line and shoot one free throw, I believe. Sweeterman's free throw up and good. 
As he connects on the three-point try, or the old-fashioned three-point play. And Coldwater now is in a 2-2-1, three-quarter court. Press. Arthur Mert reaches around to try to poke that one away from Carson. He's going to pick up the foul. That'll be the second foul on Harlem Mert here in the half. B.J. McFerrin with the call. Again, I just like when the ball is in Carson Parker's hands, the game slows down. And that's a good thing for the LCC offense. He's just under control, manages the game when he has the basketball very well. And uh, again, right there, draws the foul out top. Parker Judy gets it over to Burke. LCC quickly swings it around the perimeter. Cutlip looking for somewhere to go with it. Has this one poked away. Plotman comes up with it. LCC now has the man advantage. Parker with the nice pull-up jumper for two. Yeah, I like how he dribbled to his left and got to the elbow, and it was automatic from there. Nicely done, Carson Parker. Timeout, Coldwater. So we saw Coach Kill take the timeout. Now it's Coldwater's turn. We'll step aside. LCC on top, 19-16. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Welcome back to the Elida Fieldhouse. Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen. LCC with the 19-16 lead, but this game has been back and forth. Coldwater's had the lead. LCC's had big leads. Coldwater's finding ways to come back in this one as it has been everything that we thought it was going to be coming into this one. Yeah, it's been a great, great half of basketball. Coach Fisher with the timeout right there. I think to cause offense, he set, but also maybe let's see if they get back to their solid man-to-man -man in the half court defensively uh, if they are able to convert on this possession. So Cutlip hits the ground, but quickly gets up and uh, recovers. See Welsh, the long pass, the extra pass down into the corner. They're looking to get the Sweeterman down low one more time, but Burke playing good defense. Harlemert has to go somewhere with it. Cutlip takes it away. Cutlip, the energy guy, does a nice job there. Defensive stopper for the T-Birds on that possession. So Matthew Quatman's going to take the one, take this basketball out of bounds. As actually it was not Burke down here playing good defense. It was Jacob Locke who had come in. Billy Burke coming back into the game now. It was the, the hair and the headband <laughs> threw me off. <laughs> See if uh, the T-Birds run this sideline out of bounds for a bucket. A lot of, lot of contact there, but they get the ball in to none other than the calming influence of Carson Paul Parker. Parker kicks it out. Shots on its way, no good. Parker Judy short on his try. Welsh going to step back, three-pointer up and in. That's a tough shot right there by number 33, Mason Welsh, stepping back behind the arc. He doesn't start, but he comes in the game. He averages six a game as well. Billy Burke returning the favor. Billy Burke steps into his second three-pointer of the quarter to give LCC the lead one more time. Welsh coming down, two-point try, no good. Carson Parker with the basketball. Long pass up ahead. Here's Matthew Quatman, opposite side of the basket, did a great job of using that rim as extra protection. Gets it up for two as LCC on top, 24-19. And we have another timeout on the floor. We will step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphins. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So LCC on a little bit of a run here, capped off by a beautiful pass by Carson Parker to Matthew Quatman, who finishes on the other end for two. As LCC is back on top five. Yeah, when Parker made that pass, he just turned and walked back to the defensive end. He knew his teammate Quatman was going to finish. And he did. See, 
Busher needing somewhere to go with the basketball. Gets it back down in the corner. He's going to go baseline. Carson Parker pokes it away. He's going to go out of bounds. Basketball will stay with the Cavaliers. Coldwater's going to run their out of, under out of bounds set. Let's see if they look for Schwederman in this situation. Lazen game triggers the inbound, gets it out. Now Busher gets it back to the Blockburger. And a Blockburger connects on a three-pointer to make it a two-point difference. Again, Balin Blockburger off the bench, averages six a game, and hits that three-pointer for the Cavaliers, a much-needed three to get them back within two. Nice under out-of-bounds set executed by the Cavaliers. Kick ball by the Cavaliers will keep the basketball with the Thunderbirds. 2.40 left to go here in the half. Carson Parker waiting to get it across midcourt, wants to know where to go with it. As Cutlip, quick pass down to lock. As LCC doing a nice job of moving the basketball. As Michael Tathlinger was left all alone, and he drains that three-pointer. Yeah, he has six points on the game now, but you're right. Excellent ball movement by the T-Birds against the 1-2-2 half-court trap. Get, gets Tathlinger the open look. Sweeterman's three-pointer is short. We'll have another whistle. This one's going to go on blasting game. And that will put LCC in the bonus. They're going to go down, and they'll shoot the one and one. I believe it's going to be number 30, Payne Cutlip, the six-foot senior. Six foot, that's sort of small out here tonight, but he was in the mix right there. Does a great job getting two hands on that basketball on the defensive rebound and draws the foul. Cutlip's going to go to the free throw line. Couple of substitutions first as Willie Foster comes back into the game for LCC. Cutlip lines up the first shot. It is up, and it is no good. Swedenberg comes up with the rebound. Lockberger hands it off to Blasingame. Swederman working against Locke. Has to get rid of it. Nice slip pass to Swederman down low. Swederman gets the two. Yes, nice catch and step through to the window for Luke Swederman. Picks up his eighth and ninth point of the game, and there's a steal for the Cavaliers by Swederman. And Swederman did a nice job of reading that pass and going over and picking it up before Locke comes over with the hard foul. And that will put Coldwater into the bonus. So they will go, or Welsh, excuse me, is going to go to the free throw line to shoot the one and one. As we've said, Jacob Locke has given the T-Birds excellent minutes here in the first half with Billy Burke fighting the foul trouble with two. Burke back on the bench. He's played with those two fouls intermittently here in the second quarter. I think it's a great decision by Coach Kill at this point in time to possibly keep Billy on the bench the remaining of the half so he doesn't pick up that third foul. Wells able to connect on the first. He'll have a second one coming. As LCC right now still has a two-point lead, but Wells has a chance to make this a one-point game. Yeah, he drained that first one. He's a 53% free throw shooter. Makes good on both. Wells does. 27-26, minute 35 left to go here in the half. Carson Parker working through some traffic, gets it up to Cutlet. Yeah, working through the traffic of the 2-2-1 press by the Cavaliers. Parker slips it to Locke. Locke goes through the contact, can't get it to go down, but he'll make a trip to the free throw line. Yeah, nice pass by Carson Parker to his teammate Jacob Locke, and he reels it in and attacks the rim and draws the foul. So he's going to go to the free throw line as well. Brady Layfield picks, picks up his second personal. So Jacob Locke, first free throw on its way. This one is good. He's the 68% free throw shooter, and it looked like, uh, like it on that one. Nicely done. Back out to a two-point difference as this one has stayed tight for the majority of this first half. Locke lines up his second shot. It is up, and he leaves this one short. Long pass up to Blockberger. His three-pointer, no good. Locke comes up with the rebound, fires it up to Quatman. Quatman pulls it back, lets his teammates catch up. Parker, now he's going to go with the left hand, almost loses his dribble, keeps it up, gets it to Tafflinger. 
Good find a lock down low. We'll see if they're going to call this a shot. No, they're going to say on the floor. And I do think that that is the right call as that contact came before Jacob Locke was trying to put that shot up. So instead of the automatic two, it'll be the one and one as Jacob Locke will still have an opportunity, though, to put two points on the board. And again, excellent ball movement by the T-Birds. Quick ball movement, caught Coldwater out of position. And Luke Schwiedemann picks up his second personal. We'll see if Coach F Fisher leaves him in the game. And he will do so here with the Cavaliers having the ball on offense. So under a minute left to go now as Blasting Game brings it up. Here's Welsh in the corner. Coldwater looks like they're not in much of a hurry as Tafflinger came up to challenge as Coldwater might be content with trying to take the last shot here of the half. And Coach Kills content to keep his charges back off the ball in order to play solid defense once Coldwater does start to run their set. You could hear Coach Kill yelling, wanting his team to back off, not wanting any fouls here late in the quarter. The clock continues to wind down. Coldwater going to try to drive. Good spin. And we're going to have a jump ball as Blockberger got tied up. And possession arrow is going to favor LCC. A good defensive stance for the T-Birds. Absolutely. And again, in talking uh, with Coach Kill in preparation for this game, he just said how much that Payne Cutlip has improved in all facets of the game, but especially on defense. And he was in the one-on-one -on -one driving line situation right there and is able to come away with the held ball, which the arrow goes the T-Birds way. Eight seconds left to go. Willie Foster brings it up. He's going to pull up for three. That one rattles out. Loose ball. Parker puts it up. Partially blocked and no good. The first half has come to a close, and this one remains tight. LCC has the slim at two-point lead. They're on top, 28-26. We'll step aside and be back with some halftime adjustments here on WOSN. Welcome back to the Elida Fieldhouse. Tonight's halftime adjustment is brought to you by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen here is halftime just about wrapping up. And, you know, Dave, we take a look at the stats. There's not a lot of difference in, between either one of these teams. What are some of the adjustments they both are going to need to do to come away with this one? Well, just to reiterate, uh, first about how things are so tight. It's a two-point game. Obviously, that's the most important stat. But, man, both teams shooting basically the same, 38% for LCC, 37 for Coldwater. Um, turnovers, six for LCC, nine for Coldwater. Rebounds, 18 to 17. Just tight all the way across. As far as adjustments are concerned, LCC, uh, when they reverse the basketball in their half-court offense, they're finding good looks. They need to continue to do that. Uh, be patient. Look for those good looks uh, with ball reversals. And then defensively continue to contest the shot and limit that cold water penetration and keep them off the offensive glass. Cold water, they got to attack Billy Burke some more. He's got two threes, uh, but he was in foul trouble. But when he was in the game and scoring the basketball, uh, LCC had a little bump offensively from his efforts. And then by doing that, they need to get the ball inside to Luke Schwederman and attack Burke that way. And then defensively, they as well got to rotate defensively against that LCC uh, penetration and know where Carson Parker is at all times because he is the steadying influence for the T-Birds. Yeah, I really did think that after those first two fouls by Billy Burke, when he sat down, he came back in. He played a, a completely different he style. Did. He seemed like he had more confidence. He was attacking it. We saw him step into a couple of three-pointers. He was playing a lot more free, and I think that helped him avoid picking up that third foul. Yeah, and defensively, he wasn't uh, as hands-on, and I probably think we could uh, attribute to that to maybe an assistant coach having a little discussion with Billy about how to play with two fouls. Did a great job. So that has been our halftime adjustments as we get ready to start the third quarter here at the Elida Fieldhouse as LCC has that two-point lead, 28-26. And, you know, coming out of this, it'll be interesting to see how each team wants to start this quarter and, and 
who's going to try to just take control of this game. It looked like LCC was going to do that there uh, early part of the second, late first quarter. Coldwater did a great job of staying back into it. Yeah, I think both teams, again, are very comfortable with how the first half played itself out. And here we go. So third quarter underway, Coldwater with the basketball. And Harlemert kicks it over. Here's Sweeterman. You talked about how they wanted to get him going again. That three-point try, though, falls a little bit short. Good putback by Blazing Game. Sweeterman with the putback. Third opportunity, Coldwater catches in for two. Yeah, Sweeterman does a nice job after he shoots the basketball, attacking the rim, gets the offensive rebound, and now there's a steal. Cutlip has that one taken away from behind. Blockberger puts the two-pointer up. No good. Billy Burke with the rebound. Billy Burke, the glue guy for this T-Bird squad. They need him on the floor. We're going to have an offensive charge right there. Great rotation. There's Sweeterman defensively. So we are tied to 28, right? And Coldwater has come out on fire. As you can see, Parker Judy trying to back in through a little bit of an elbow slash shoulder there in front of the official, pick up that offensive foul. Yeah, I liked Parker Judy attacking the rim right there, but he needed to jump stop and go straight up. Picks up the offensive charge. Schwederman doing a nice job defensively. Coldwater one more time. Harlemert puts it up. That one's a little bit long. Cutlet comes up with the rebound, and we're going to have a whistle as I believe this is going to be on number 22. It is as Evan Harlemert, Harlemert is going to pick up his third foul. Payne Cutlip doing it again. We talked about a big rebound he had in the first half. Smallest guy on the floor, another big rebound. Draws the contact, goes up strong with both hands and gets the personal foul called on the Cavaliers. Carson Parker gets it up to Quatman as a Cutlip now. They're going to reverse it. Ends up in the hands of Parker. He can't connect. Sweeterman comes up with the rebound. Uh, Jacob Locke and Billy Burke both on the floor. As usually we have seen them going in and out for one another, but Coach Kill wanting a little bit of exercise and strength on the floor. Jacob Locke cuts in front of that one, gets the immediate turnover. Just like the first half when Locke entered the game, he made his presence known right away. Does so here in the third quarter as well. Going to Burke on the inside. Spins back into the lane. Lots of contact. He has to kick it out. As it looks like he's need to set to the side. He's going to get it right back. Going to go up strong through traffic. Can't get it. Tries to get a second opportunity. No good. Rebound comes down to Coldwater. A lot of contact underneath there on that particular possession. Play on. Play on. Big boy basketball. Lockberger can't connect. Leaves that one short. Lock comes up with it. Long pass up to Quabman. Quabman left hand. No good. That one's going to go out of bounds. It'll stay with LCC as Kaup could not hold on to it. Quatman comes down with the full head of steam, tries to use that right hand to get it off the glass. Can't connect, but stayed with it, but just enough pressure on Justin Kaup where he couldn't cleanly get that basketball in. Yeah, Evan Harlem hustles back to create uh, the attention for one Matthew Quatman, and he was unable to connect on that, uh, on that power shot, on that layup. Blazing game knocks this one out of bounds as they were trying to find Carson Parker on the inbounds. Parker gets it to Burke. Burke's going to keep it himself. LCC, we're not seeing him move quite as much as we did early, but it doesn't matter as Carson Parker does a great job of splitting the defense, switching hands, and finishing at the rim. The T-Bird offense had everyone spread out, creating a driving lane for Carson Parker, and he takes advantage of the opportunity. No help from the Cavaliers. Give the bucket to Parker. He now has nine points. Carson Parker, the leading scorer for the T-Birds tonight. Billy Burke with six. As this one's going to go out of bounds, it'll stay with the Cavaliers. You're right, it is interesting for the T-Birds to have uh, Locke and Burke both out there on the floor at the same time, but it's worked to their advantage, doing a nice job. Gets them a little more uh, height and definitely a little more uh, beef and strength. Fight for the loose ball, great heads up play that time by Payne Cutlip as he rushed to that basketball, able to knock it back in as it goes out of bounds off a Cavalier player. So the possession will go to the Thunderbirds. Yeah, he just has.
done so many things for this squad in this winning streak down the stretch uh, of the regular season has uh, Payne Cullip. I'll just be honest. Again, I called the game with St. John's and LCC, and I don't remember Payne playing in that game. So kudos to him and uh, what he's done uh, for this T-Bird squad at this point in the year. So we have a blood timeout. You saw a couple of possessions ago. Billy Burke down low as he went to spin into some traffic, made hard contact with a couple of Cavalier players as he came away kind of holding his face a little bit, a little upset he didn't get the call. And now a couple of trips down, that blood is flowing as it's coming out of the nose. So he has to go to the sideline. Looks like he may even have to switch jerseys, so they're going to try to get him ready to go quickly. Carson Parker, he's going to take it into the middle, leaves that one short, fight for the rebound, comes up into the hands of Cutlip. Cutlip works baseline, looking for somewhere to go with it. Here's Tafflinger, extra pass. Quatman's going to let the three-pointer go, that one short. Michael Tafflinger does a great job, get the offensive rebound. Carson Parker drives, leaves that one short. And Cutlip did a great job, but he was slightly out of bounds with that right foot as the possession will go back to the Cavaliers. Of course, you want to score on the possession, but if you're Coach Kill, you've got to be really happy with your aggressive play uh, on that particular possession. Offensive rebounds, attacking the rim, just relentless, and that'll pay dividends before the game's uh, over if the T-Birds continue to attack on offense like they did on that possession. So we've seen LCC really attack the offensive boards here in this third quarter, giving themselves some extra opportunities. That three-pointer goes down for Blazingame. That is his first points of the night, and it puts Coldwater up one. Big shot for Blazingame, the 6'1 senior. Extra pass, Tafflinger lets the three-pointer go, and he answers. Anything you can do, I can do better. The Tafflinger. The 48% three-point shooter does it right there, counters the three by the Cavaliers in Blazingame on the previous possession. Tafflinger now has a three-pointer in each quarter, but he's going to get whistled for the foul on the other end. And it's going to they're going to say that's a shooting foul as it looked like it had been on the floor as the Sweeterman had just gotten that basketball. But the officials say he was going up for the act of shooting, and Sweeterman will take a trip to the free throw line where he is a 62% free throw shooter. Also leads his squad in rebounding at six per a game, does one Luke Schwederman. Billy Burke back at the scorer's table, so they must have gotten him all fixed up. He'll come in after this first shot as Schwederman connects. So Billy Burke is going to come back in for Jacob Locke at this point in time. Sweeterman lines up his second free throw. It is up, and it is good. Back to being tied as we are knotted at 33. Quatman Park and Carson Parker back in the backcourt, move it up. Here's Burke, he has this one blocked, gets his own rebound, puts it back up and gets it to go down. I love his stick to right there, one Billy Burke. Missed the first shot, stayed with it, collected the offensive rebound and laid it over the front of the rim. Nicely done, Billy Burke. Great back door by Blockberger, can't connect. We're going to have a jump ball. Possession arrow favors the T-Birds. Anytime there's a 50-50 ball for the T-Birds, who does it seem that's involved with it? None other than Payne Cutlip right there again. Gets the held ball and it's going to be LCC basketball on the alternating possession. Coldwater continuing to put that pressure on LCC, not making it easy for them to bring the ball up, but they're able to get out of trouble. Cutlip gets it down to Tafflinger, looking for the back door, ends up up top to Parker. Parker, extra pass out to Quatman. As Cutlip has to pick that one up. Parker, he's just going to pull up with the shot. That one's going to be no good. And we're going to have a whistle, had some contact. The official looked like he might have gotten a little banged up on that one. And I believe this one's going to go on Blazing Game. I believe that's who he was pointing at. Yeah, Clay Ehrman takes a little shrapnel with the bodies flying around. He had called a foul on the shot, and he ended up getting uh, receiving contact from uh, uh, LCC player and a Coldwater player checking out and the physicality at the window. but. Carson Parker at the free throw line, drills the first one. He's a 74% free throw shooter for the T-Birds. Blazingame, Blazing excuse me, did get a uh, charge for that foul. It was his second team second, as Parker can't connect on the second. 
Three-point game under three left to go here in the third. Lazy game. Going to move up top. Lockberger, he fights into the lane. No good. Billy Burke comes up with the rebound. And we're going to have a foul. Yeah, Burke aggressive on the glass. And then the Coldwater players thought they, they sensed a trap opportunity, but too physical. And the foul is called. So Coldwater, they're running this 2-2-1, and I don't really think it's affected uh, LCC in the sense that they've turned the ball over, but it's just changed the pace of the game a little bit. But you got to get back on defense if you're going to run this, and I do feel like the T-Birds have had some opportunities and almost a turnover right there. LCC fortunate to keep that one. That looked like that was heading out of bounds, but Harlem tried to grab it, goes off his fingertips. And we're going to have a timeout on the floor. LCC has the three-point lead. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Road State College, a two-year state college offering affordable in-person and online associate's degree and certificate programs. So a quick timeout by the Cavaliers. Find themselves down three with 2.25 left to go here in the third. LCC with the basketball. Matthew Quatman is going to trigger the inbound. Coming out of the timeout, I think we're going to see, yeah, the Cavaliers are going to be in a 2-3 zone in this possession. A little bit of contact there on the inbounds. LCC plays through as Parker's going to go one-on-one -on -one into the lane. Tries to create some space. Has to kick it back out. Quatman readjusts the shot. Two-pointer, no good. As Burke tried to tip the rebound back, Coldwater comes up with it. So they're successful in the 2-3 zone for keeping the T-Birds from scoring. LCC in their patent and man-to-man D. Lazing game works against Cutlip. He's going to drive. Kicks it out to the corner. Shots and no good by Pot Connor. Rebound comes down to LCC. As Cutlet brings it up into the front court. Here's Tafflinger. And here's here's the T, here are the T-Birds reversing the basketball. Nice job. Great slip pass to find Burke down low and Burke with the strong finish. Carson Parker again. When the ball's in his hands, just it seems like good decisions occur. Uh, for the T-Birds, Billy Burke, the recipient of the assist there, finishing at the basket. Harlemert moves it around to Blazing Game. He's going to go with the left hand in the lane. Jump stop, shot up, no good, but we're going to have a foul as this one's going to go against Payne Cutlet. Marcel Blazing Game, he's a second team Midwest Athletic Conference selection for the Cavaliers. Others on the team with recognition, Evan Harlemert, the second team macker. Justin Kaup, honorable mention, and then Luke Schwederman, he earned first team recognition in the Midwest Athletic Conference this year. Lazing game connects on his first. They get a 38-34 difference. Some more substitutions coming in for the both squads. Lazing game lines up his second free throw. Shot is up. This one's no good. Fight for the rebound. Ends up in the hands of Quatman. Quatman going to push it up. But Harlemer does a great job of reading that one, getting his hand on it. He's going to pull up for two. No good. And hard contact as Carson Parker went up to get it. Him and Mason Welsh had a collision as Parker hit the ground. And Mason Welsh is going to get called for the foul. Yeah, great sportsmanship there by Welsh as he helps the LCC player up right there, Carson Parker. You see him go right over there, right there. Nice aggressive play by both teams. But it's going to go the T-Birds way with the foul. Carson Parker's taking a lot of hits. The quarterback for the Thunderbirds this fall. Not used to getting the worst end of those, but Welsh went up strong trying to get that rebound for his team. As you saw Carson hit the deck. And we can clean some sweat up off the floor before we get restarted. The Cavaliers going to stay in the 2-2-1. Two, two, Three-quarter court press. Cutlip gets it across midcourt. Oh, dangerous pass that time as Carson Parker was just coming over the timeline. 
2-2-1 back to 2-3 zone here again as Coach Fisher wants to keep the ball out on the perimeter. Cutlip, no look pass to Burke on the inside. He's going to attack the rim, and we're going to have a foul. I believe that's going to go on Luke Schwederman. Nope, not Schwederman, but none other than number 33, Mason Welsh. That'll be the fifth team foul for Coldwater as Cutlip hands it off to Quatman, who's going to bring it back up top. 20 seconds left to go. LCC is going to look for the last shot. And Coldwater goes back to man-to-man -to -man here at the end of the quarter. Carson Parker waiting to trigger the play. 10 seconds left to go. Looking for the one-on-one. -on -one. Takes the right hand. Spins. Here's Burt, top of the key. He loves that spot a little bit too hard on the shot. Harlemer gets a shot off at the buzzer and no good. That brings the third quarter to a close. LCC has the four-point lead, 38-34. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Fourth quarter just about underway here at the Alina Fieldhouse in this sectional semifinal between LCC and the Coldwater Cavaliers. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen. And it has been close from start to finish, and I don't expect this fourth quarter to be any different. I agree totally. Uh, LCC does extend the lead by two points to four here at the end of the third, but it's just been close throughout the third quarter numbers. Coldwater, two for 11 for 18%. Not real good shooting, one for four behind the arc. LCC, four for 14, one for four behind the arc. Coldwater three for four from the line. LCC one for two. Rebounds nine to five in LCC's favor. Turnovers, LCC three, Coldwater one. Coldwater has the basketball as Sweeterman goes inside. He's going to pick up the foul as Jacob Locke is going to get whistled for it as Sweeterman will take a trip to the free throw line. So again, coming out of the quarter break, a design play to get the ball to Sweeterman on the block. We see the replay goes right inside there. Locke tried to get over and just wall up, but the contact, he draws the foul. Schwederman at the line, shooting two, and I believe he undercooked that first one. As Schwederman trying to maybe control a little bit of adrenaline, took something off, not able to hit anything on that first free throw. Second one is up. That one, he makes the adjustment, and That's it's good. That's what you call a nice bounce back. Carson Parker with the basketball around the timeline as Coldwater continues to put pressure anytime LCC has to bring the ball up out of bounds. Parker dribbles around, gets rid of it. Squatman now is going to take it back up on near the logo and reset. Squatman was looking, I think, for a screen to come, but nothing happened. He still found some space, just took it himself, but had it taken away. LCC kept possession. Locked down low, able to finish. A little bit of a broken play that time it looked like, but LCC made the most of it. Broken play, but a nice pound dribble and attack to the backboard by Locke as a postman coach. I love that move right there. Carson Parker with the rebound. He's going to take it. Behind the back, spins. Nice pass down low to Locke one more time. A readjust out of space and back-to-back -back, uh, baskets by Jacob Locke as LCC on top, 42-35. There he is again, getting a deflection is Locke. Another takeaway. LCC is going to call the timeout as they had a little bit of a collision as Locke and Parker both hit the floor. So we'll take the timeout. We'll step aside with LCC on top, 42-35. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsors Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Excellent hustle by the T-Birds right there to get this lead up to seven at this point in time, Nate. And you got to give the 
fortuitous bounce, if you will, the deflection by Locke, and then they come up with it, and Coach Kill, Johnny on the spot, calling the timeout when they're in trouble. But I'll tell you what, Jacob Locke, he's been the super sub today up to this point in this game, and he's just played really tough, really hard. Uh, I know you're a Chevy guy, but Jacob Locke, he's built Ford tough. You're not a Chevy guy? Oh, sometimes, Dave, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm a Chevy guy, but, man, I wouldn't want to mess with Jacob Locke tonight. He is really, really – uh, given his team a lift. He has. He has brought something different to this LCC team that obviously right now has been the difference maker. When he has been out there, they play with a different energy. As you see, they immediately go back to him. Great up and under, and he gets that one to go down. That is not an angle that you usually see people make a basketball, but he did, he did that one intentionally, got the spin on it, and extended this lead to nine. Couldn't agree with you more. He, he's making his team look good, making himself look good, and making us look good too, calling his name. Blazing game's three-point try, no good. Blockberger gets the rebound. Kicks it out to Sweeterman. And Sweeterman now, long pass. Blockberger gets a little bit of space, lets a two-pointer go. That one's no good, going to be out of bounds. As Harlemert was just coming baseline, that basketball just kind of ended up in his hands, and he didn't have a chance to readjust his feet. Yeah, out of bounds on the offensive rebound, but overall, up until that point, that was a great defensive possession uh, for the T-Birds. They score here and put it into double digits. Going to treat themselves nicely, and they do. Carson Parker, seen that throughout the game, the 2-2-1 press. They haven't really attacked it uh, consistently, but when they have, good things have happened for the T-Birds. Carson Parker with the great move to get to the inside, finishes at the rim as LCC now has their largest lead of the game as they're up 11. 5.30 left to go here in the game. Coldwater with the basketball. Blazing game. He's going to drive. Gets it off the glass. Gets it to go down. Exactly what the Cavaliers needed right there. Excellent medicine. Attack to the rim and score the bucket. And Carson Parker with an uncharacteristic turnover right there. Had his man Jacob Locke wide open on the block. Just led him a little bit too far. And we could see Carson's facial expression. He was really upset with himself for not connecting with his teammate. Here's Blockberger for three on the other end. That one's off. Matthew Quatman comes up with the ball. Going to bring it up to Parker. Under five left to go. Goldwater trying to bring some pressure up top. LCC doing a nice job of passing out of it. Here's Cutlip. Cutlip gets rid of it just as the double team was coming. As Carson Parker now is going to dribble it back up near the logo. Now it's where if you're a T-Bird fan, you want to execute what you do offensively consistently, uh, what your go-to plays are right now, where you get your teammates in a position where they are effective in scoring the basketball. And Coldwater, you got to turn up the defensive pressure a little bit. They get the deflection out of bounds, and Coach Fisher's going to call timeout. So now it's Coldwater's turn to take the timeout as they are down to trying to stay in this one. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Road State College, a two-year state college offering affordable in-person and online associate's degrees and certificate programs. So Coldwater takes the time out now as they find themselves down by the uh, not quite the largest lead, but more than they have been for the majority of this game. They're trying to find a way to make sure this one stays close. Yeah, it's been an 8-3 to three quarter in favor of the T-Birds thus far. And I think what we've seen in the fourth quarter, LCC has attacked the basket and gotten some shots up around the basket and scored it. And Coldwater has settled for the three-point shot a little bit here. Not inside-out action at all, just settling for a quick look from deep. And they haven't connected. And as a result, the T-Birds have uh, given themselves a nine-point lead. Matthew Quabin takes the handoff from Parker and gets it right back. Carson. Looking for somewhere to go with the basketball. Gets it out to Cutlet. As LCC content with just running clock right now. Not in any hurry. Don't want to try to force anything. They're going to get in there set now. 
Carson Parker with the ball in the corner. Nice uh, screening action for Burke to get the ball in the block. Parker, he attacks the rim. Can't get it to go down, but he's going to make another trip to the free throw line. Again, a nice cut off of Billy Burke with a basketball. Gets it back to Carson Parker. Gets the defense out of position and draws the personal foul. We see it on the Road State College replay. Nice give and go. And again, Carson Parker just seems, again, when the ball's in his hands, good things happen for the T-Birds. Able to get to the rim and draw the foul. Going to shoot two. Just about four minutes left to go in the game. Carson Parker steps to the free throw line. First shot goes down. This is back to a double digit lead. Parker again, a 74% free throw shooter. 13 points in the game right now. Averages 15. Second shot is up and it is good as well. Two big free throws for Carson Parker. Extends this out to an 11 point lead with under four minutes left to go in the game. And the T-Birds extend their man-to-man -man defense to full court, just being solid. Coldwater looking to get Sweeterman going on the inside. Working against Burke, has to cut it out. Harlem Merton out, long pass. As LCC's defensive pressure causing a little bit of issues right now, but a great cut that time by Blazing game, but he can't get it to go down. Rebound comes down to the T-Birds. And Billy Burke with the rebound. Billy Burke, who had those two early fouls, has not picked another one up in this contest, has done a nice job playing foul free. Great save by Billy Burke. Unfortunately, ends up in the hands of Harlemert. As I was a little surprised not to see Carson Parker take that three-pointer when he was wide open. And Coldwater takes advantage on the other end as Harlemer drops the three-pointer. He shot that one from, you know, another area code. He was out there really, really deep in Greg Simpson land to go back in time. Going to have a foul on the floor on Mason Welsh. That's going to put LCC into the bonus, so Billy Burke's going to take a trip to the free throw line to shoot the one and one. Greg Simpson land, uh, Dakota Mathias land here at the Elida Fieldhouse, Aaron Hutchins land, an LCC great from the past. That was deep. Burke connects on the front end of the one and one. He will get a second. Billy Burke, the leading free throw shooter for the T-Birds at 84%. Burke's second shot is up, and it is good. So 10-point lead for the T-Birds now with 2.52 to go. Coldwater's got to be a little more aggressive offensively in the sense I think they look to need to get the ball in the paint off the bounce and then either go up with the bucket or the shot or look for an opening uh, at the arc. Welsh turnaround jumper, no good, but he's going to go to the free throw line as Jacob Block is hobbled a little bit. Not sure if he rolled his ankle and somebody maybe step on it, but he's trying to walk it off. So Mason Welsh does exactly that. Gets in the paint, doesn't connect with the shot, but draws the foul. And Jacob Block, as you said, a little bit hobbled. Insult to injury, he picks up the personal. That's his third. But Welsh unable to connect on the first one. Welsh able to make the second. Goes one for two for this trip to the free throw line. 2.35 left to go, nine-point game. Cutlip going to work against that pressure from Coldwater. Gets it up ahead. Jacob Locke, touch pass to Quatman. He gets the shot up, no good. But it's going to be his turn to go to the free throw line. Coldwater switched out of their 2-2-1 to full court man pressure. And again, a great job of breaking the press. And there's Jacob Locke again being unselfish. He could attack the rim himself, but gives it up to his teammate, Matthew Quatman, who draws the personal and shooting two at the free throw line. Quatman's first free throw falls short. As he only has two points on the night so far. Second shot is up and good. 
51-41, back to a double-digit lead once again. Welsh, three-pointer on its way in, good. Mason Welsh trying to keep his team in this game, buries a huge three-pointer. And that it ends up being his ninth, tenth, and eleventh point of the game. Coldwater's going to call a timeout right here, but Coach Fisher talked about how his bench production has been good throughout the season. We've seen it from Balin Blockberger tonight and Mason Welch. Blockberger with three. Welch, as we said, picks up his 11th point with that three. Yeah, you can't, you cannot overlook what Mason Welch has done. Two big three-pointers, three for four from the line so far, as he has been a big reason why Coldwater has been able to hang around. LCC's done a nice job of kind of extending that lead at times, but Coldwater going nowhere. And this one's coming closely to the end of the game. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedule on WSN Friday. Fairview, Ottawa Glendorf girls basketball, Liberty Benton Bath girls basketball, and Allen East Jefferson girls basketball as the girls tournament is well underway. And then take a look at the boys basketball as we will have sectional finals here at Elida game one and two, and then the sectional finals at Miller City on Saturday at 6 p.m. So coming out of the timeout, the T-Birds are gonna have to execute their press offense. Coldwater in complete denial here, looking to get a five second call, make things tough on the birds, but Cullop gets the basketball. Yeah, a little bit too easy that time as Billy Burke just kind of handed the ball to Cutlip. And we're gonna have another timeout as Coach Kill was worried about that 10 second violation. LCC on top, 51-44, 2.08 left to play. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Coach Kill with the timeout there because he was uh, concerned about a 10-second call. He has two remaining. Coldwater, they are out of timeouts now for the rest of the game as far as regulation time is concerned. So a quick foul by the Cavaliers as they are going to force LCC to go to the free throw line. To, they want to close this one out. But they may have found the wrong player. As you mentioned early, earlier, Billy Burke, the best free throw shooter on this team. Good coaching by uh, Frank Kill to get that ball in the hands of his best free throw shooter. Let's see how Billy Burke does at the free throw line here. Very calm and collected and drills it. Burke now three for three from the line tonight. Coach Kill, he just talks about Billy Burke being his glue guy. He's top, guarding the top inside player every night. He works inside. He's got a couple threes tonight as well. Comes to practice every night, ready to get after it. Great attitude. And we've seen it tonight uh, at this point uh, throughout the game. It's a blazing game. He's going to let the three-pointer go as Coldwater's trying to stay in this one. Pass up ahead to Parker. Parker almost loses it, able to gather it back in, gets it to Quatman. Some contact. Parker can't get it to, or excuse me, Quatman can't get it to go down. Chases for the loose ball, and it is going to go back to the Cavaliers. Great effort there by the T-Birds. They're up nine. Coach Kill saying, yeah, take it back out, take it back out. Well, they're right at the basket at that point in time. A lot of good things can happen. Unfortunately, a few bad things can happen, and that's what occurred. Uh, LCC comes up empty-handed on that particular possession. Blockberger's three-point try is no good. A minute 30 left to go, and time is starting to run out for the Cavaliers. As you mentioned, they are out of timeout, so they got to get this clock stopped somehow. They're going to fail Payne foul, excuse me, Payne Cutlip, and he'll go to the free throw line. Payne hasn't scored this evening, but he's the second leading free throw shooter for the T-Birds at 78% and the T-Birds are now in the double bonus. Collip's first free throw is up, no good. They still have a second one to come. Again, not asked to score for this squad, just does so many other things, and we've seen it on display tonight. Payne Cutlip has had a great game. 
Second free throw is good. So Cullip is on the board tonight and extends the lead to double digits. Harlemer, three-pointer, good. A deep three-pointer as Evan Harlemer gets his team back within seven. Burke, long pass up as Carson Parker went high to get that one. And the foul is going to come down to Matthew Quadman. He'll make another trip to the free throw line. Flipping the script there a little bit. Carson Parker in the fall, he's the one throwing the ball right there. He got to play receiver. That's a nice job reeling that one in. Matt Quatman going to the free throw line for the T-Birds. These are big ones as the lead's down to seven. Misses that first one. Matthew Quatman went one for two. His last trip to the free throw line, not able to connect on that first one. See if he can make the adjustment. Second shot is up, and that one's also no good. So Coldwater still with an opportunity here with just under a minute left to go, but they're going to have to score quickly. Blockberger, he lets a long three-pointer go. That one rattles in and out. Fight for the offensive rebound as Jacob Block is going to get whistled for the foul. Mason Welsh is going to make a trip. No, he is not. Excuse me. We still have one foul to go for the one and one. So not a bad foul by Jacob Block. Prevented Mason Welsh from going back up with a clean offensive rebound. And Coldwater is going to take this one out of bounds. 49.7 seconds. They need to get a good look early. Do the Cavaliers. Catch and shoot. No good. Michael Tafflinger with the rebound. And he's going to get fouled immediately. So the T-Birds are going to come down to this end and shoot two. Michael Tafflinger has not shot a whole lot of free throws this year. I actually have him 0 for 2. I find that hard to believe, but that's what the stat sheet says. Let's see what he does here from the, from the charity stripe. So Michael Tafflinger, usually the sharpshooter from the three-point line, has an opportunity here from the charity stripe. That one rattles around and out. It does come into play right now that Coldwater doesn't have any timeouts. They score, they can't stop the clock. The T-Birds can be a little patient, taking it out of bounds. Tafflinger does hit the second one. That gives him 10 on the night. LCC now with three players in double figures. As Carson Parker, Billy Burke, and now Michael Tafflinger all over 10. You have Jacob Locke there with nine. As Sweeterman's going to drive, he gets that one up and in. 30, 30 seconds left to go, and it is down to a two-possession game. And by no means am I saying that Coach Fisher used his timeouts ineffectively. He, he used them when he needed to use them, just a situation on how the game has played out. He doesn't have any remaining down the stretch with just a six-point lead for the T-Birds at this point in time. Parker, or excuse me, Payne Cutlip at the line, shooting two. Cutlip not able to connect on that first one. A big second free throw coming. If he can knock this down, it'll make it a three possession game. But if he can't connect, Coldwater still alive with 31 seconds left to go. Shot is up. This one is good. Lazing game quickly brings it up into the front court. Looking for a quick shot. 25 seconds left to go. Coldwater can't waste a lot of time. Cutlip got his hands on that one. Blockberger going to throw it up, but gets it rejected. Burke comes up with it, and we're going to have another foul. But I believe that is just about going to do it for this game. Another great defensive play individually by none other than Payne Cutlip. He blocked that shot with both hands, Nate. Just went up and got it, and it, the deflection ended up going into Billy Burke's hands. He's fouled. And the T-Bird faithful, they're smelling the W, looking forward to playing for a sectional championship. LCC will be back here Friday night at 7.30 to take on the Bluffton, who won the sectional semi before this game. It took them double overtime to knock off the Mustangs after they came back from a 19-point deficit. But that'll be another rematch from a game played earlier this year, and it should be an excellent one for the sectional title. Burke connects on his first. Second free throw is no good. Swedeman comes up with it. Harlem is going to move up quickly. 13 seconds left to go. Deep three-pointer. 
That one's no good. Carson Parker comes up with the rebound, and he is going to dribble this clock out. LCC comes away with the big victory tonight and will move on to the sectional championship Friday night against the Bluffton Pirates. They win 57-49. We'll step aside and be back with tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on WOSN. Welcome back to the Elida Fieldhouse. Tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner is sponsored by Stolly Insurance Group. Check out the highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page. So we had some conversations off air. There was a lot of deserving candidates, but when it all was said and done, I think the energy that Jacob Locke brought into this game and what he was able to do really compelled us to pick him tonight. You're right, Nate. Energy being the key word. He was a super sub. He came in early in the first quarter because Billy Burke picked up two personal fouls, and he made his presence known right right away with his hustle. On the stat line, he was four for four from the floor and one for three from the line for nine points and did a great job of earning that playing time because in the second half, Coach Kill rewarded him by putting him out there with Billy Burke. And again, that combination was very effective for the T-Birds as a whole tonight. And Billy Burke, or excuse me, Jacob Locke just did a really nice job contributing as a whole to the team victory. And he really catapulted that Thunderbird offense at times. When he came in that first time after uh, Burke picked up his first two fouls, they started getting going. They come out in that third quarter. Coldwater comes out, hits him in the mouth, hits a couple of shots right off the bat. There's a timeout. You see Locke come back into the game, and things got going. They go on a run. They get the lead that they do not relinquish, and he just brought a, a different element to this team that they really needed tonight. Yeah, and Coach Kill was very comfortable when Billy Burke uh, was injured, had a nosebleed, and was out of the game because, again, Jacob Locke had earned the playing time and just continued to do what he did. A great recipient of our Stolly Insurance Award winner tonight. So it was another great game. We had two excellent games here at the Fieldhouse in this sectional semifinals. Any final thoughts on tonight's matchup? Well, you know, it was an evenly played game throughout. Um, LCC won three of the four quarters. In the quarter they lost, they lost by one point. So that that just showed that they were in charge of the game, but they just couldn't pull away from cold water. But in the end, they, they pick up the nine-point victory or eight-point victory. And again, congratulations to them. It's going to be a great sectional championship between them and the Bluffton Pirates on Friday. So that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at the Alina Fieldhouse. I'd like to thank our crew, everybody working in the trucks and behind the cameras. We appreciate everything that you guys do. One final time. The LCC Thunderbirds knock off the Coldwater Cavaliers 57-49. For Dave Bowen, I'm Nate Garlock. Thanks for tuning in and have a great night, everybody.